Hey dudes, last night one of the channel's longtime subscribers dropped me a link to some Nikon Brawl test footage. This is a huge favour that Will has done for the channel, as I, like many of you, are probably curious to see how the combo of Brawl and Nikon cameras work together. So to be clear, we're not assessing Will's cinematography or the Z line of cameras. We are assessing the Nikon N-Log Brawl and the current post pipeline in DaVinci Resolve 17. This is a deep dive into the usability of Nikon Braw as a format. This is the first footage from Nikon and a Blackmagic Design Video Assist in Braw that I have used. When I first loaded up the footage, it looked very promising, but on further inspection, it was a bit of a bummer that the ISO had been locked and unchangeable in post. This may or may not change in the future, as currently in the Braw Developers SDK kit, the ISO gamma curve control is listed in the metadata, but the analog gain per frame value cannot be altered. Other Raw SDK values like white balance Kelvin, white balance tint and linear exposure are adjustable. In Resolve, these appear as color temp, tint and exposure, but these are also locked in the raw settings unless changing the brawl at the clip base level. This may have changed by the time you find this video on YouTube. At the time of making this video, however, there is another major downside to Nikon Brawl, being there is only one combination of settings that you can choose if you want to control the gamma settings in Resolve 17. This may be different in Premiere, Final Cut Pro and Avid though. The only way in Resolve to open this option is to change the gamma space from N-Log to Blackmagic Design Custom. Only then will you gain control over the gamma settings in post. I find this a little bit strange as the camera is exporting its video signal as N-Log which is then converted to Brawl in the Video Assist. And what seems even stranger is if I choose to use the camera data in the Raw Dialog checkbox, you will see three things happen. The first is that N-Log will appear as the gamma space. The second is there's a definitive change in exposure, color, contrast, and saturation. And the third is that the option to change the gamma controls appears. And you need these controls to get the most out of the image. And for me, it's been the only way that I've been able to get rid of the noise from the footage. As you can see here on the park bench, once I figured out that you're kind of locked into the Blackmagic Design custom as a gamma setting to reduce the noise levels, Everything from there was smooth sailing and I was able to achieve various looks without any other issues. And once the noise is gone, the footage just, it just comes to life and it starts to look fantastic. All right, with that, let's have a look at uh, highlight and shadow detail retention. The Brawl combo with the Z6 appears to hold detail in the highlights really, really well. But like any camera, it, if it's clipped, it's clipped, it's gone. But with N-Log, you do have access to highlight recovery plus gamut compression in the raw camera settings and it works really nice it helps you squeeze every little bit of extra gradable info out of the brawl video file the footage also seems to retain a lot of detail in the shadow areas in fact once you get the settings right to reduce the noise you're able to dig a lot of information out of the shadow areas so the thesis of the day is one's color space transform selection affects everything with nikon brawl and I did find myself spending more time with the settings than actually grading the footage. But this is the exact reason you test your entire workflow, right? Or you test grade the footage that your clients send to you. Understanding how the footage behaves is paramount to success in post. For me, the nicest looks I got from the footage was by grading everything from scratch, or when the individual clips were being decoded on an individual rather than a timeline level. This is a very user case based scenario as the clips I have been provided are very different in nature, set up to set up. I don't think I can be any more transparent than that. What I can say is compared to how easy Canon RAW footage is to grade, it seems a little bit trickier. The Canon RAW workflow is far simpler. Now I don't want to come off as biased, so just let me explain what I mean. Even though I'm finding the same flexibility with the Nikon RAW files as the Canon RAW files, they are much more sensitive to how they are decoded than Canon RAW files. Meaning if the settings aren't right with the N-Log Brawl, they just get super noisy. The colors go smushy and then the shots end up not looking sharp. I can only gather that this is being caused by the conversion to Brawl and how the data is being debated and reinterpolated. As each small change produces huge differences in chroma and luma noise levels. 
but I'm sure this is a resolved thing and with time it'll get sorted out. You know Blackmagic Design guys are always on top of this sort of stuff. The Nikon Braw also seems to have a decent recoverable range, but again, it seems to be very dependent on getting the settings exactly right in post. Check out this higher contrast night shot that Will sent over. Straight away you can see the noise in the image. But if I nominalise the midpoint, it virtually eliminates the noise. Now the noise looks like it's gone, but it's not. If I push the mid channel to the extreme blue, you will see that the noise becomes very noticeable. Now you may be thinking, well of course you push the blue to a stupid amount and I would agree, but watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to copy the grade from this shot over here and I'm going to apply it to this image. Now that I've applied that grade that looks almost identical, if I push the blue channel to the mid-tones like I did before, look at that. There's no noise in the blue channel. This shot is now clean as a button. And again, once the noise is clean from the bra in the channel it's being represented in, the footage becomes really usable. Let's look at this series of shots and focus in on the ducks on the pond. For a duck shot, this is pretty cool. Thanks, Will. You can clearly see the green tinge coloured feathers in the duck's heads and that there is a great range of tonality. The image is super clean and devoid of the bra noise that I was discussing from earlier shots. But this shot does highlight the lack of mid-tone detail in the raw data. Without the addition of a significant amount of mid-tone detail, the ducks almost look like, well, like they were soft, which is not the case. Will definitely got this shot in focus. Just look at the difference though between adding mid-tone detail to the ducks and what it does to the shot. This is the flexibility of bra and what it has added to the Nikon camera system. Now I know that you can add mid-tone detail to any shot, it's the way that I've been able to add this mid-tone detail into the shot via a key selection that was made very easy because of the 10 and 12-bit codecs. Now the dynamic range looks solid and the lower noise in the daytime exterior shots is super nice. So let's have a look at some conclusions. In conclusion, Nikon N-Log Bra is very easy to manipulate in post. With minor tweaks, the colours are very pleasing to the eye. And even though this is a non-scientific test that I didn't shoot, it is clear this combo has great dynamic range, good colour fidelity, good detail retention, good low light capabilities and potentially much smaller RAW files than say Canon RAW. And after assessing the footage that Will has sent through, I don't think anyone using this combo is going to run into too many problems. There is stacks of information in the mids, blacks and highlights. But I was really having to get the setup right in post to avoid digital noise. Now some would argue that this is a common problem with RAW formats, but after using the Canon R5 for a long period of time, I'm not sure I agree with that statement anymore. I could have used noise reduction, yep, on the footage, totally agree with that statement as well, but I don't like to get caught in a balancing act between detail retention and image noise, because the trade-offs aren't always pleasing. Whatever's best for the project, right? But in saying that, it's clear that Nikon Braw retains exceptional detail and it's easy to grade because of the bit depth. It reminded me kind of of the days of using a 5D Mark II with Magic Lantern installed. But the biggest downside to the footage was the lack of resolution, which is very apparent when trying the smallest of image enlargements. When I tried to enlarge the test footage, the footage became very, very smushy and I can't seem to figure out the logic behind the ISO values being locked in Resolve. What is the point of giving users bra, then baking in the ISO value and locking the post-production gamma controls? But in saying that, look, Canon does exactly the same thing with Canon RAW in Resolve. Unfortunately, the answer to the question I just asked is something that is only open to speculation from both camera companies and Blackmagic Design. It's up to them, guys. Which brings me to my final point. Even though this is an N-Log RAW conversion from a Nikon camera, it works seamlessly in Resolve, and most likely other RAW compatible post software like Premiere, Avid and Final Cut. But for me as a Resolve user, it opens up another door to gain potential customers and further remove the limits of what cameras I can own if I wish to continue shooting in RAW or RAW formats. But like most Resolve users, I do wish that Blackmagic Design would go just go that little extra step and adopt Apple ProRes RAW into Resolve. Because we are missing out on an entire customer base. But that that's, look, that's an, entirely another video. And with that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye for now.